So today's topic is let, let Thanksgiving pervade your life. Uh, pervade is a word that you may not use very much. It means infiltrate everything. Let Thanksgiving be uh, like yeast in bread that's worked into the whole batch so that there's no slice that's without yeast. Uh, and so that every part of your life has Thanksgiving in it, embedded in it. We're going to start with uh, two images and then uh, take a look at this uh, topic of Thanksgiving. Uh, the first image uh, is uh, about a river. And uh, one of the wonderful things about the internet is you can find out all kinds of facts that uh, you might not otherwise know and uh, maybe your friends don't know. Right now, it's still dark in Nanana. The sun hasn't come up, uh, even though it's in the United States. Uh, and uh, so I thought I'd check the temperature for you. Uh, it's minus 17. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about the river near Nanana, it's right now a frozen river. Uh, it's a river that freezes uh, sometime in October or November and uh, uh, the Tanana River. And uh, the reason that some people know about it is because 100 years ago, some railroad employees decided to place wagers on when the ice would go out. And uh, so for 100 years, Alaskans have been betting uh, on whether uh, or when the ice would go out. And if you go up there now, the ice is solid. So if some of you are from the Midwest, uh, you know that uh, even the Great Lakes and some definitely lakes and rivers, uh, you can drive a car out on them uh, at some times of the year. Because Don't try this in Chicago. Uh, but if you've got a smaller lake, uh, it freezes so solidly that you can drive a car out there. And if you're from communities like that, you know that uh, every now and then someone drives a car out there too late in the season. Uh, but if you were up in uh, Nanana and decided to uh, measure how thick the ice was, uh, you could get out your ruler and uh, it wouldn't help. Most of you know, oh well, if you've been in the Midwest at all, you know that it doesn't take too many inches before you can easily skate on something without fear. The ice may crack as you skate over it, but there's no way it, you're going to sink because it's a couple inches thick. Uh, but this doesn't, so if you got out uh, your yardstick and went to measure the depth of the ice, it still wouldn't be enough. So if you're going to measure the ice on the Tanana River, you have to get a uh, ruler because it's 41 inches thick. Uh, and when the river gets that frozen, if you just went there without knowing the cycle of the year, you might say, that river is so stuck, it's never going to get unstuck. That, that, that much ice, that's just, that's not going away. And you'd be, tr you'd be correct for November, December, January, February, March, April. But sometime between April 20th and May 20th, all that ice goes away. Uh, it starts in the uh, spring with the sun becoming warm enough and rain to start melting the top of the ice and the river that's flowing underneath, even though it's dreadfully cold, is still melting the ice at the bottom. So over time, between April and May, the ice gets steadily thinner until at some point it starts to crack. Uh, there may be holes that open up and pieces of ice, like little tiny icebergs, uh, little pieces of ice, but they don't have anywhere to go because the river is frozen. Okay, so that's the first image we're going to look at. We're going to look at two images. Uh, second image that I want to put before you is a bedtime habit of some friends of mine. I uh, visited these friends uh, when they were kids, and um, so 
think about three boys in the range from three to nine years old. And as they're going to bed each night, the habit is a habit that I commend to you, whatever age you and your, uh, you are and family members, to say one high, one thing that was great about the day, and one low. And if you're on your own, don't have anybody to call, put it in a journal. One high, one low. One thing that was great about the day, one thing that was not so great. One of the things that you'll discover if you uh, begin with this practice when your kids are little is that when they're 16, they'll still be talking to you. Uh, and the other thing that'll happen is that uh, in a, uh, say you've got three and five-year-olds who are telling you their highs and their lows, many days you'll think, yeah, that's not so sad about the lows, and sometimes you'll think, I don't know how I would negotiate that. With a lifetime of learned skills, I don't know what I would do. Uh, so as people begin to talk about what goes on, what's gone on uh, in their day, some days it, they won't offer you that much that seems that important, but over the course of a year, you will be able to pray into lots of situations that really it would be helpful to have them prayed over. So they had this habit of talking about uh, what had gone good that day, what had gone bad, and then uh, before they prayed, uh, they would uh, talk about the attributes of God. So I'm up there listening in, and these young boys are just saying, not in turn so much as just one after another, uh, popping out ideas of what God is like. God is faithful, God is just, God is holy, God is merciful, God is loving, God is compassionate. And as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I haven't got one word to toss in there, you know. Uh. So a month later, I visited them again. They're doing the same uh, bedtime routine. And I'm still thinking, yeah, I got nothing. Uh, it's not that I, I mean, I, I believed what they believed. I believe God is holy, God is just, God is merciful, God is loving, God is compassionate, God is a rock, God is faithful. Long, I mean, you could, if you started your list, you'd find you could add a long list, but I wasn't in the habit of verbalizing it. I was a little bit like that frozen river. Water flowing underneath, grateful to God, thankful to God. Just can't tell from the outside. From the outside, looks pretty frozen. Uh, but, like anything, if you devote a little bit of time to practice, you can get good at a remarkable number of things. And if you start to verbalize, to say things out loud about God's attributes, you will discover that while it may be slow going at first because your river is so frozen, uh, that as you practice, it becomes easier and easier. And, and pretty soon you have a free flowing stream of gratitude and thanksgiving. That as you begin to focus on God, before you pray and bring all your requests to God, as you focus on how good God is and how loving and compassionate and merciful, that changes you because you begin to realize, oh, all those problems that I thought were so enormous, well, they are enormous, but not compared to God. Uh, and as I focus on God and what God is like, it puts my world in perspective. So as you begin to uh, talk about what God is like out loud, just a simple practice of naming some attributes of God, I think you'll find that it breaks things up. The ice starts to get broken up and the river starts to flow and it's really quite helpful. So, let thanksgiving pervade your life as our topic today. Let thanksgiving be embedded in all of it. And we had a member here some time ago that I'm not going to 
reveal anything but her gender, and it's not anybody here, so don't try and figure it out, okay? Uh, but if you asked her, uh, so what are you thankful for today? Her response over and over and over, nothing. <laughs> wow. Nothing? And then, uh, uh, luckily, uh, Tony Robbins uh, models a style of question that may be helpful if you encounter someone like this. Uh, so a person who uh, has lots of reasons that they might not be thankful. Maybe they're too depressed. Maybe they're too much in pain. Maybe they're too lonely. Maybe they're too sad. There's lots of things that would cause people to think, well, I'm just not thankful today because I've got this overwhelming feeling that uh, that's, I'm sitting with this, sadness, loneliness, whatever it is. So the question for that, in the midst of that, is uh, I really, I understand. Uh, I can see how, uh, with what you're feeling today, there's really maybe not that much room or no room for thankfulness. But if you were thankful, what would you be thankful for? What that question does is it opens up the possibility that I don't have to be thankful today because I'm so sad or I'm so lonely or confused or whatever you're feeling. Uh, but if I were, what would I be thankful for? And uh, the initial response, again, might be nothing. Uh, but ask again. Yeah, I understand. I get it. Uh, but what could you be thankful for? What might you be thankful for if you were thankful? And one of the things about the human brain is it will answer any question that you ask it. So you really should not ask it questions that you don't want to hear the answer to. You should not ask questions that you don't want that outcome. So a question, why am I so depressed, may have some temporary value, but you really shouldn't ask it a long time because your brain will come up with lots of reasons to be depressed if you keep asking that. So the far better question is, what can I do today, even though I'm feeling what I am, what can I do to enjoy today? What's one thing I could do? Uh, what's one thing I could do to uh, thank God about? So uh, whatever it is, uh, you begin, even though the river's frozen, to just, I understand the river's frozen today, but if it weren't, if it were flowing, what's one thing that I might be thankful for. And as you begin to raise that question or other questions that lead to outcomes that you desire, one of the things that you'll discover is that you can actually answer it. You might be in tremendous pain or confusion or loneliness and still say, well, I I'm really not feeling that great today, but if I were thankful about one thing, you know, and then it'll be some kind of personal story, probably. I, I had tea yesterday, I got out the cup, that was my grandmother's, and it just reminded me of her. And I guess I am kind of thankful about her. Wow, that's awesome. Anything else? Uh, as we begin to open up the possibility that a person might look beyond their present situation and the feelings they're feeling and have a possibility, a possibility of thankfulness regardless of how they're actually doing today. You begin to open up the possibility of the river of life flowing, not just how it always flows underneath, hidden, it's always flowing, but also the ice gone so you can see it. Uh, First Chronicles 16 says, Give thanks to the Lord, call on the Lord's name, make known his deeds among the people, sing to him, sing praises to him. And so if you uh, uh, are bold, you could sing praises. Uh, and uh, awesome idea, tell of all God's wonderful works. Glory in God's holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. 
Uh, we're going to look at Luke 17, so if you're uh, interested in following along on that, uh, it's in the uh, back of the book, and in uh, the books in the rack in front of you, it's page 82. The numbers start over in many Bibles. We're going to look at Luke 17. Uh, Jesus is uh, in the middle of a three-year journey to teach people how to live, and as uh, he's wandering uh, through a particular place, ten lepers approach Jesus. Now, the way that leprosy works is it removes your ability to feel pain. So that may sound like an advantage, if you, but what it does is it means that you don't, pain helps you know when you're in danger, when you need to move, when you need to get out, when you need to do something. And if you don't have the sensation of pain, you will leave your hand somewhere that it shouldn't be a hot stove or something. And so leprosy, because people don't sense pain, causes tremendous disfigurement over time as people burn themselves and hurt themselves and don't know it because they aren't able to experience pain. And in the uh, time uh, that Luke was writing his story, the um, medical community was the priests. In, in Israel, if you had leprosy, you had to go to a priest who would examine you and say, yes, that's leprosy, or no, that's not. And if you had leprosy, you had to be sequestered. You couldn't uh, hang around people. You, as you approach people, you had to let them know that you had a disease that, uh, that they uh, might not want to be in contact with. And um, so, Ten lepers approached Jesus and keeping their distance, which was required by the law. They called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they know their condition, and knowing their condition, they come to Jesus and cry out to him, have mercy on us. He says something uh, that might not, when they first heard it, have registered. Go and show yourselves to the priests. Uh, why would they do that? Well, when you were free of leprosy, then you went to the priest who would certify it that you could come back into regular society. Jesus is telling them, you look like you're leprous, you feel perhaps no different, but go to the priest. See what they say. So Jesus tells them, without any change that they can tell, to go to the people who can certify that they're free of the disease that they think they still have. Go show yourselves to the priests, and as they went, they were made clean. A lot of times, we want the answer to be when we're asking, and when we're asking, we or sometimes before we ask, we've gotten the answer, but it's in transit. And uh, Jesus often asks us to have the faith in the present day that God is good and that God is supplying all your needs, that God cares for you even though some part of your life may not look like you want to be especially thankful for it today. As they went on their way, they were made clean. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. So one of them is on his way to the priest. The priest is the only one who can certify that he's able to go back into society. But he puts that step off for a while. He can always go to the priest. Seeing that he's healed, he goes back to Jesus. He prostrates himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him. And uh, he was a Samaritan, which we just don't have a word to translate that. Uh, well, maybe you do, but it's on an individual basis. He was on the political party that you didn't vote for, and he was a Facebook troll. Every time you sign on, he's the one who keeps poking you about the other candidate and how great they are, and how your candidate isn't so great. That's not, a, what I'm trying to get at is, in those days, Samaritans despised. So I don't know who it is for you. Hopefully you don't despise people in other political parties, because it's like half the nation. 
he was uh, in a group that was looked down on, and so uh, Jesus said, we're not ten made clean, the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Uh, do you understand from Jesus' question, the other nine, where are they? Jesus is looking for us to thank him and God is looking for us to give thanks and praise. Uh, you can get an answer to prayer that you, you pray, the answer is already in transit, but you don't see the answer for a week or uh, uh, some time. And so many people said, say, oh yeah, I prayed about that a week ago and now I got it. Do you think that was a coincidence? Uh, some people don't make the connection, and so they're not inclined to be thankful. Other people aren't thankful for a variety of reasons. But God really is looking for our thankfulness. Get up and go your way, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Uh, Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. We're going to give you a chance uh, at the microphone to do that uh, right after the next song. So if there's something that you're thankful for after the uh, next song, we'll give you a chance to come and express it to God. Let's take a moment for prayer. Why don't you stand? God, thank you that uh, regardless of how frozen we are and out of practice of praising you and thanking you, that uh, underneath our frozenness, your goodness is constantly flowing, melting us. So we do thank you and praise you for this day, for who you are and for what you've done. And we thank you for blessing us so much. And for people who are in such pain or confusion or loneliness or sadness that that's overwhelming them. Help them to receive your mercy and recognize it and give thanks. Thank you. Amen.